it is great to um, to uh, be here and uh, to talk about uh, engaging more learners with online learning labs. And uh, this is a project that I have been involved in for some time now. And uh, my name is Una Carthy, and uh, I am a passionate uh, language educator and uh, convinced that we can transform uh, the whole learning experience for potential learners across Ireland. Okay, so what I'll be doing today essentially is I will be uh, comparing what we had uh, in our traditional lab with what we have today uh, potentially with the more modern uh, online language laboratory. And uh, it, it, it doesn't take too long to see the uh, striking difference here. On the left hand side, you see uh, that the traditional lab was built on the behaviorist paradigm confined to time and place, um, in a certain sense, isolating learners uh, in their learning experience uh, with um, uh, primarily auditory exposure to um, snippets of the target language. So if you compare that with what we have on the right hand side and the potential offered by uh, digital technology to transform this experience, um, building on the constructivist paradigm, <clears throat> transcending both time and space barriers, connecting learners, and uh, adding in visually stimulating material. Uh, so we had here below the uh, stimulus response uh, concept, very much a sort of a parroting uh, the, the snippets of uh, target language to this more collaborative space here uh, with uh, learners engaging uh, in shared tasks. So uh, more about the traditional lab now for the moment. And um, what she had there was passive repetition, pronunciation practice. Uh, the learner was being conditioned to articulate target phonemes. I think it was Christopher Alexander who talked about the drill and kill approach. Uh, and that was in 2007. More recently, um, Lotherington has conducted a survey of some of the market leaders of mobile learning apps and discovered uh, traces of this approach, believe it or not, in, in that more modern uh, context. She talks about, uh, again, behaviorist pedagogical theories, repetition and memorization. Uh, all of which are part, of course, of the learning um, experience, but um, when, when it's to the exclusion of all else, there's certainly something missing. And of course, you have this image here of the traditional lab. Um, some, of, some of you would have memories of this from the past. I certainly do uh, in my days of learning um, in the, well, we say 80s and 90s. Okay, um, on now to what the modern scenario offers with online language labs and uh, content that can be accessed from anywhere at any time. We have authentic material and you might be wondering why I have authentic in, um, uh, in, in inverted commas there. Um, well, basically uh, the reason for that is that for the um, the uh, ab initio learner, we have to adapt our material uh, so that they don't get overwhelmed with the authentic nature of it. So um, that's what I'm going to show you in a moment. So um, the uh, higher levels of learning at around B2, C1 can cope with the authentic stuff. But for the, um, the A1, A2 level, we need to adapt that material. So it's not really authentic, authentic as such. And I will uh, demonstrate that in a moment. <clears throat> we can also embed in videos, quizzes, and interactive games. And this creates a dynamic learning and engaging environment. Asynchronous tools can provide unlimited practice, whereas the synchronous channels can connect native speakers for live interaction. And what happens is that this immersive experience moves to center stage and becomes embedded 
into the learning pathway. And this, I believe, is the transformational effect of digital technology. Okay, what I'm going to do now is give you a sample of this. Uh, what I have to show you are native speakers who will be role pairing scenarios. What I did was I captured these on Microsoft Teams. I uploaded them to Panopto. Um, I created captions with English translations and I embedded short quizzes to test comprehension. So that was um, uh, basically the background to what I'm going to show you now in a moment. So our scenario this morning is, this afternoon rather, is uh, Laura and Lucas meet for the first time at Bremerhaven University. Laura and Lucas treffen sich zum ersten Mal an der Uni in Bremerhaven. And now what I'm going to do is stop sharing that screen and go into my other screen. Just bear with me for a second. I hope you can see that okay. We'll just play it from the beginning. Entschuldigung, wie komme ich zur Mensa? Ich kenne mich hier nicht so gut aus. Hallo, ich heiße Lukas. Wie heißen Sie? Ich heiße Laura. Du kannst mich aber duzen, Lukas. Woher kommst du, Laura? Ich komme aus München. Und du? Okay, so what happens uh, now is you have your quiz, which is positioned here at the um, exactly 35 seconds in our um, in our uh, in our demo but for some reason it's not going into quiz so we'll just click that now in a moment now the question is wer wohnt in der Ludwigstraße okay and we are going to put in the correct answer here just to see what happens and finish Okay, so it's telling me that I have correctly answered one out of one question and I can continue my video. Ich wohne etwa eine Stunde von hier in Osterholz-Scharmbeck. Kenn ich nicht. Wie schreibt man das? O S T E R H O L Z S C H A R M B E C K. Freut mich, dich kennenzulernen. Hast du Hunger? Ich gehe gleich essen. Tut mir leid. Ich muss zur Vorlesung. Vielleicht nachher. Okay, and once again we have a little quiz. Last marked Lukas jetzt. And um, this time we are going to answer incorrectly to see what happens and finish and here we can see zero out of one we have the option to either review or retake the quiz if we review it it will explain why we have uh, where we went wrong in our answer so uh, that really is it in terms of the quizzes and we can now continue ein, in the video. Ein, ein Minute. Ich warte auf dich. Bis bald. Okay, thank you very much there. I'm just going to go back into my PowerPoint now. One second. Bear with me. And on to my final slide, because I, I understand that we're, we're running out of time. Um, for some reason it won't let me finish up. Okay, so I'm going to go on to my final slide here, which is this one. And I want to um, reiterate um, how important it is to um, use digital technologies to transform the learning experience of language learners, 
from moving away from rigid behaviorist approach, transcending time and space barriers, creating unlimited practice opportunities for pronunciation, creating connections with native speakers, promoting active participation, and moving the immersive real world experience from the periphery to the center of the learning pathway. Thank you very much.